Hey, honey? Yeah, what's up? It's your board barista fan here in my Louisiana nerd bunker. And uh, just before we dive into this week's episode, I want to talk. We are still going to give away one of these playmats when we hit 500 subscribers. We're at uh, 228 as of recording this, so we're almost halfway there. So don't forget to like and subscribe and also share so we can start the process of the giveaway for the Ren and... Uh, Ren and Wolf, uh, the Shin Hati and Sabine Ren uh, playmat. All right, that's enough for that. Let's dive into what you really want me to talk about, and that is how I did drafting Anakin Skywalker green yellow. Um, all right, I'm just gonna level with you though. In fact, I I messed up. Like somewhere in like packs two and three, I started taking some yellow cards. Thinking about going off of, of green, ended up not realizing it until after I had drafted everything that I was actually short. Uh, like every green card I drafted was straight up stone cold playable. Every red card I put, drafted, except for like one card that snuck in here, and that is the uh, the old code, uh, the old access codes. I didn't really plan on putting that in my deck. It was just somebody late passed it to me, and I'm like, ah, okay, I'll take this. Um, so I ended up having to put, uh, one, two, three, four yellow cards into the deck, uh, just to actually make the deck hit a 30 card playable deck. I am happy about the fact that I did put an in pursuit in here. You can see that right up here. Well, you can't really see that up here, but you can see it, uh, <clears throat> on the screen. It's the... Uh, it's my first zero drop card on the the top left hand corner, um, top yeah top left hand corner of the uh, of the pitcher of cards. That actually I think going forward I am going to make sure that I do draft one copy of that, just because it, even playing it for two uh, is good because you're able because I was able to save myself in match in match number three, be able to tap down their huge space vehicle. Uh, I was going to be taking seven to the face, but I just tapped down a, a clone trooper token and I was able to gain myself enough time to be able to, uh, you know, aggro out there, <laughs> aggro out, kill all their things. And a uh, big, big staple of this deck is definitely drafting the aggro. That's why I'm happy that I got three copies of, uh, Denup's Loyalist. I got three copies of the Advanced Recon uh, Commando. I got two copies of the B2 Legionaries, and I got two copies of the Low Altitude Gunship. All three of the, all four of these cards, I think, are key in the Anakin Green draft because of that key keyword on there, Overwhelm. You really want to have something that you can push through the damage. Uh, or force them to have to trade their units into yours. Uh, a lot of my opponents got smart about it, being like, "Okay, I'm going to have to sacrifice my turn one play to eat their eat my turn three play because they can't let me untap, activate Anakin, swing with that thing." So I was able to even play these things up straight removal, and that's what I want to do with this deck: is just trade units, keep their stuff off the board, so I can get to my late game bombs in that. Uh, low altitude gunship in the B2 Legionaries in my Anakin, just having hit the flip on him is 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 not especially when you've got 20 damage on your base and you're swinging for with an 8-7 that's got overwhelm and ways to pump it up and trick it out, um, <clears throat> which is where we go into uh, just the pump stuff on getting on these overwhelms. The old access codes, yeah, it's a little bit of pump. It's just one, uh, 
might be able to draw me a card, but I'm trading the units and I'm eating battle droids. Every single chance I got to attack an overwhelm unit into a battle droid, I'm taking it because that's keeping them off of their uh, coordinate. Yeah, coordinate. Uh, no, coordinate is my, it's their exploit. Keeps them off their exploits uh, with the overwhelm, eating their units, Getting that overflow damage. <clears throat> uh, I did draft a lot of troopers because I was kind of hoping on getting that enhancement, that upgrade that lets me give a unit plus one, plus one for every trooper I have. Didn't get a lot, the, didn't get see any of those, but I did see some Grim Resolves. Grim Resolve on my damaged, uh, my big damaged Overwhelm units and on my Anakin, I swung for 11 at one point, like he actually, uh, like I had Anakin was up to being like a uh, seven, seven. And then I had, uh, f like five damage on him. So I just like played grim resolve, turned him into a, a 12, seven bashed into a battle droid and just watched his base. Just go. <laughs> it was like two more attacks and in, um, the, uh, enduring leadership, uh, I think this is actually kind of nice because once I've flooded the board and I've got control and I start going wide because I've been eating all of their small stuff, keeping them off of their big plays, uh, being able to drop this and then just basically be like, okay, I'm going to attack with everything, you know, make my, my Sentinel, uh, my battle droids, it's a little bit tougher to eat their way through, make it so they have, like, they're forcing, tra I'm forcing my opponent to trade with me. Uh, just because he's like, I can't let anything, any of these overwhelm units stay on the board. I got to try to eat them. Um, and just being able to give them a little bit more of damage and a little bit more toughness on everything on the board, just to stay alive a little bit longer, to be able to get in there. <clears throat> oh, chef's kiss. Um, I did like the fact that I got a better space package this time around. I wish I would have gotten like one more copy of the, uh, headhunter squadron, um, that thing is nuts, really good in Anakin. You're basically turning it into a 3-4 that can eat any early space units, keep space clear. A lot of the damage I was taking was in space just because I wasn't able to... I don't have a lot of space units, and I think that's one of the things I'm going to try to fill in uh, next time. Like these, you know, the four yellow cards I have in the deck, if those were all like an extra Headhunter Squadron or even... Um, a subjugator starfighter or an arc uh that would have been great having like a you know a couple more in this two three and four drops especially with ambush uh just to be able to eat theirs and uh hopefully add some more dudes to the board so when i do uh play that whole give everyone plus one plus one or if i get the uh the upgrade so i can have more troopers on the board I really wanted that to be able to put that on Anakin because if you're able to go wide and put that on, <clears throat> you're just, it, it just, Anakin just a beast at that point. Um, then the B2s end up being a beast as well. Being able to put that upgrade on a B2 is good. But still, Grim Resolve on a B2, a B2 can take up to three damage. Um, and then give it, then just basically have the initiative, the B2 is still there, with three damage on it. You're making it a 10-1. It's going to die. It's going to attack a battle droid or a clone trooper, one of these weak tokens, and get 9 to 8 damage through onto their base. That's a threat. Um, and Batch Brothers, I think I undervalued Batch Brothers. I had a chance to take a Batch, Batch Brothers. And I, and when I, one of the times I did take one of the yellow cards. And I think if I would have had another Batch Brother, brother that would have been really good. It's... it's, it's Solid, decent, gets you a good, decent board presence on turn on turn two. Having those two dudes, being able to use them as chump attackers to eat a to do a eat a big threat on their table, on their side of the table with Anakin. Um, I'm starting to think that Aurora Singh is a little bit of a trap. Uh, I would love to actually get her. She's a bit more of a win more card, but it is nice just to have something to top off my curve uh, with for a seven drop especially because it's got overwhelm uh she does with anakin turn turn to a nine six and then if your opponent's like i gotta attack your they're trying to attack your base and they're trying to like 
edge out that bit of extra damage. You do have the untap Aurora, swing again, deal some more damage into their base. <clears throat> I think it's good. Um, the uh, the other green uh, non Republic unit that I did put in the deck was the uh, Bactoid uh, Spider Droid. That thing is nice being able to bring that in and ambush and uh, take care of some problems later in the game. Had some fun with that. It also is one that can take a lot of damage, so you can kind of like ambush it in, have it live. They're going to probably want to kill one of your overwhelmed targets. Then you can untap Grim Resolve, swing for 10 on their base. This deck is is coming together. Um, yeah, the Plo Koon, I think I got baited into... Like I, got, I saw the Plo Koon get passed to me. Um, it was a foil Plo Koon. I'm like... I could play. I could play yellow. I think I fell into that trap. Um, I think still in the situation, looking back at the draft, I probably still would have grabbed that foil Palukun, just because I know it's something that somebody that's in cunning heroism on the table would definitely have um, have a good time with <laughs> playing it against me, having it so it can ambush in and eat one of my uh, eat one of my overwhelmers. Uh, it does not. It can take a lot more. To, like, I can't overwhelm through that unless it's one of the bigger overwhelm units. And <clears throat> so that's like a, like a B2 battle droid. I can get through and I'll get one chip damage. But chances are they're already going to eat something else on my board. So it was a good hate take. But it should not have led me into yellow like it did. And I think I probably would have had a much better, more consistent deck. Um, and not kind of like splashing in uh the old access codes to do it but you know i learned a little something like having those four off color cards it really did make my uh resourcing choices a lot easier because if i did see a yellow card and a grip of you know everything else in my opener hand i know i'm like okay i'm just gonna resource the yellow card and is there a another card in my hand that i can that I don't need that I could resource. It made that good. I did get did get stuck with one time. I'm like, ah, I got like three. I got like three yellow cards and no other stuff for any other early plays. I got a mulligan this hand. Uh, it did force me to do that. Where if those were some, you know, a few other of my smaller units or a few more overwhelm early turn units uh, or even just another squadron. Like some more easy play space stuff, uh, some more lower drops. It probably would have actually been better for me. But even though I did mess up, I didn't stick to my colors. I still ended up putting together a really decent deck. And I learned the value of the In Pursuit. And every one of these yellow cards is actually dece. Uh, you know, the, uh, the Breaking In. The, the R2-D2, R2-D2's got cool abilities. Plo Koon's got an awesome ability. Not an awesome ability if you're paying 7 for it, but an awesome ability if you're paying the 5 for it. Um, <clears throat> so I do think, you know, going forward, I'm definitely going to want to have a copy of In Pursuit. I might I might splash in an In Pursuit and a Breaking In in any of my decks in the future, because I did end up playing the ba Breaking In to get that last bit of damage I needed on one attack. So... They do have a place, but I think R2 and Plo Koon and all the other yellow cards I drafted that didn't even make it into the deck, it did distract me. It did water down my deck a bit, but even watered down Anakin able to go 3-0, it's, it's just nuts because all you do is you just take your Grim Resolves, your your uh, Dead Ups Loyalist, your... Uh, Art Troopers, your B2s, and your low altitude, gun altitude gunshift. Um, I know that needed to have a little bit more Rebel Synergy, but still even having the uh, the, the uh, Republic Tactical Officers being an Anakin ability that you don't have to actually pay the damage for is nice because, uh, yeah, no, I set myself up for I could basically, like, like turn five, I dropped a low altitude gunship, did a little bit of damage to a unit, uh, 
turn six attacked with low altitude gunship off of the Republic tactical trooper, able to play another unit, another like two units, another two drop, another three, uh, three drop. You'd be able to establish a bit more of a board presence and just grind into my opponent with that. And that's and follow up on the next on turn, turn five, turn six, then turn turn seven. I end up playing a second low altitude gunship, and at that point, I was able to just basically use the gunship to nuke something off the board. <clears throat> it. So, if there's any takeaways from this, you're drafting Anakin. You want to be at drafting green. You want the loyalists. You want the arcs. You want the B twos, and you want the low altitude gunships. The rest of the deck, you just want to fill in with good value cards. Batch Brothers, some pump effects, uh, just to be able to have something to play on your Anakin. Uh, definitely some uh, action cheating, you know, being able to put the Republic Tactical Officers down, being able to use the Grim Resolves to both pump and attack. Um, yeah. So, go, have fun, draft some Anakin Green. Look at this deck, look at my pre-release deck. Uh... I think there is an Anakin Green deck in Competitive Constructed, and I'm going to keep drafting and keep play testing all these different cards. Because I think that's one of the reasons why you should be drafting more, is because you do get to play test more with the cards, experiment with the decks. I know I'm not going to get as lucky as I am to be able to basically play Anakin every time I play Limited. Uh, I will acknowledge the fact that I did not open the Anakin in my packs. I got past a player picked Maul over Anakin, which I think was a big mistake. But hey, you want to play Maul? You want to play Maul and pass me the Anakin? As soon as he passed me Anakin, I knew exactly what deck I was going for. Because there is not a single rare in this deck. This is all the power of commons and uncommons. And it's easy to get the key cards that we want to have in this deck in the common slot. So that's why I think Anakin's going to be a bit overpowered for limited. And you're going to see me drafting a lot more of them. As long as I'm lucky enough to either crack an Anakin or somebody's, somebody's willing to pass an Anakin to me, I will be happy. And I will see you next week for another Wars Wednesday, another draft. I'm going to the save point. If you're in the New Orleans area, make sure to join me at the save point on Sunday night. Uh, try to get there around six o'clock. Uh, so we can start at seven 30, but, uh, Anyways, hopefully I'll see you there. If not, I'll see you next week for more Star Wars Unlimited. Peace. Hey, everybody. Thanks for staying till the end of the episode. Uh, remember to like, share, air, subscribe. Follow us on Facebook at Board Barista Productions. And if you want to support us, Patreon link at the bottom.